Bienvenue à Comment gagner de l'argent et comment créer une entreprise et augmenter vos revenus avec Glendon Cameron. taught that real people don't hustle that good respectable and this is how the email goes good and respectable people get jobs this hustling thing is something shady it's something that good people and they kept using this terminology good people bad people about hustling and what is a hustle and what is a business I could tell that this person was very uneducated in owning a business and uh, was deeply steeped in, I must have a job to be considered a productive and gainfully employed member of society. That's who I was talking to. Well, I should say that's the person that I received an email because we didn't really have much of a conversation. What is hustling? Hustling is extrapolating opportunity from the situation at hand. That is what hustling is. Now, I do agree there's a difference between hustling, being a hustler, and having a business. There are many hustlers that went on to have businesses. You can have a job and hustle. You can have a business and hustle on the side. The big difference, and I, I'm gonna, I will keep saying this, between hustling and a business is your application of effort and time. When you have a business, I don't care if it's spanking rabbits' asses, you, get, you don't have a business till you get to the point that you can walk away from that business and it still produces money for you. That is the primary difference between hustling and a business. Now, I love hustling. I think hustling is awesome. I also believe hustling is a great transition state from someone going from a job to their business because to be a really good hustler, you have to be self-driven, self-motivated, get up on your own and get up and get out there and get it. You have to do that stuff to be a hustler. Otherwise, you're just not going to make it. You're not going to make it. You're not going to be successful with your hustle because your hustle is dependent upon you driving yourself. Essentially, you have auto start, push to start, whatever you want to call it. You don't need someone to go, little Johnny, it's 6 a.m., go out and get your success. No, you don't need that. You're like... Oh, I'm up. Where's my fucking success? I hadn't had my coffee, but I want my damn success. That's the difference. Now, let's talk about the negative connotations of hustling. If you tell people, I'm, you're a hustler, next thing uh, they envision in their mind is that you're Lenny from Good Times. I'm Lenny and I've got plenty. Now, I consider myself a hustler, and I'll say it at a dinner party, and it always produces a uh, very stimulating conversation but no one ever runs away because I give that definition of extrapolating opportunity out the state at hand I'm not trying to rob anybody beat someone over the head that is called criminal activity hustling, hustle, drive motivation those are some wonderful attributes to have because if you are a, let's, let's just call it one of the most uh, famous hustlers of recent years, Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> Actually, he, can, uh, you know, I don't really know on the criminal thing. I know he got sued. I don't know all the pertinent details, but they handed him a project and he did the project, but he put most of his time and effort into his project. And uh, we have Facebook today because of that. Hustling, like I said, extrapolating opportunity out the state at hand. That is hustling. You uh, go to a garage sale and you see that someone has a McCoy pottery collection up there. 
and you see one that's very rare and that sucker you know it in your mind you know it's between 15 and 2000 is what you can get on that thing for ebay and you go over there and this is how i used to do it i was not the one that would break people down i would search for things that i knew had value and ask them this simple question what is your price and if their price was reasonable compared to the value that i knew that i was going to extract i paid it i didn't go well you know okay I'm about to buy this stuff from you that's gonna make me $500 and you're asking 20. I'm not gonna break you down. I'm just gonna say thank you, take it, give you your 20 and get the hell on. Uh, there are other people who would break that person down to five because you know that's one of the things I talked about in my older book, The uh, Pimping Craigslist for Fun and Profit, about the grinder mentality. It's not enough to make a profit. They have to extract a little pain out of your ass as well. But if you want to be a hustler, these are some of the core tenets that you must have. A personal sense of direction. If you're always asking people what to do, what should I sell, and never ever go, <clears throat> I'm just gonna try some new shit today and I'm gonna see if it works. If you are so scared of failure, if you are so worried about someone laughing at you and talking about you and saying bad things like ooh, you tried it and it didn't work out, you're just stupid if you're worried about all of those other personal things that may or may not come, you will never be a hustler you have to be fearless to be a hustler you have to have an incredible internal compass to be an upper level hustler now I started off hustling in the resale business. You know, it, it was just, <clears throat> it really started when I had a job. And I was trying to serve this client, and this client could not be served based on the protocols <clears throat> that were inherent <laughs> in my company. You couldn't do the things they, you know, per company rules and regulations couldn't do what they wanted because I went to the owner of the company and said look we can get this deal I mean I can get this deal and make a lot of money and you can get this deal and make even more money if we do this and he was like no 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 I mean he was just straight up no that's not our customer base that's not our target we can't do it okay fine cool so I go back to the customer and then the customer throws me a boomerang if you do this We'll do this for you. And I was getting, <clears throat> excuse me, this pollen. I was going to get 50% of the take. This deal, this hustle, because I still had my, get my, my job, was still my job. But this hustle really set me up on a good path because. I had to just really plug in some people into certain situations. But I was getting 50% of the take, which means if I sold a U group for 750, I got 375. And I got it instantly. I didn't have to wait until it went up to corporate and come back because I was really it, it taught me how to drive the sale. It taught me how to control the sale. Because I had a got a group of guys come in and they were starting a new what was it? It was a technology business. I remember that. And they wanted all of these U groups. And we were selling them for $750. And the premium ones, I was I was not coming down on the price. The ones with scratches, stuff like that. I would definitely give people a break. But they wanted all of the good ones. And I was like, and they were just like, and they wanted them for $450. And I was just like, no. And then Nancy, who was there, she's like, well, you know, I was like, no. No, 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 no. So they went away. Then two days later, another girl comes in well another company comes in led by a girl and they're doing this consulting business and they need 20 U groups and what sold the deal was the ones that I did not sell for cheap because this there's there's a lot of parts about being a hustler sometimes things people they're what I call low money hustlers they're only on those low money deals it's just like hey you know if I can distract any profit you know, if you're beat down and you made some poor decisions, okay, yeah, extracting profit is a good thing. But, you know, because I stuck to my guns because, one, I knew the market. I knew what those things cost new. 
and then I knew if an informed customer came in and saw the price of those youth groups, it was going to be a no-brainer. And that's exactly what happened. I mean, we talked 20 minutes before she made a decision, and she pulled out her checkbook, which I had go to the company, and at that point, Nancy had to put it in their account. But Nancy paid me, because once the check cleared, Nancy paid me instantly. Once again, it didn't have to go back and forth. We didn't have none of that nonsense. And I made shit. I because there was some other stuff that went. That was a very profitable week. Because she got the 20 U groups. She bought the safes. She bought the filing cabinets. She bought. Let's see. It was about a $22,000, $23,000 sale. And I got 50%. Yes, I, I mean, that was the biggest chunk of it. But at that point, the client really saw my worth because Nancy told her guy, she's like, yeah, we made way more money working with him. She said, I would have sold that stuff for one fifty two hundred just to get rid of it. He's clearly good at what he does. And she said that while I was in the office and she uh, handed me my nice check. And that that was hustling. That was hustling because I still had a job. I was still doing those other things. So you can hustle, but you must have a life map and a road map for your hustle. Because what's going to happen, and I saw this through the storage auction business, is you're going to become stuck with your hustle. You're not. You you will try to get as much money as you can, but you're not. You hear you. This is this is some of the words that you know. That you're stuck with your hustle. Yeah, you're stuck with your hustle. Hey, I'm trying to stay under the radar. You know, I'm not trying to grow too big. Well, you know, I'm trying to keep the. Uh, you're stuck. You're stuck because who would not want to make a million dollars? If you get stuck at you know eighty, ninety thousand because you don't want to deal with the hassles and the headaches of growing, you're stuck at your hustle and you have fear. You have a lot of fear. There's some issues. There's some messed up puppy issues there because I, I saw a lot of people that were in that situation and they, they got stuck. So part of the reason I'm having this conversation with you with what's a hustle, what's not a hustle is if you really, really hustle well, you, you really take your hustle to a really high level, you will develop the skills to run a business. If you keep your hustle at a medium level or a low level, you'll never develop the skills to start a business. Now, you can, there are many businessmen that are hustlers, but all hustlers are not businessmen. Once again, what is the definition of a business? A business makes you money when you sleep. Now, for many of you, it's like, well, hey, you know, I have a service business. You know, I clean parking lots. Uh, I, you know, do laundry. I pick up the rugs from corporations. I clean toilets. Okay. Once again, going back to what I said about the whole deal of starting a business, of elevating your hustle. At some point when you're pushing your hustle really, really hard, it's going to dawn on you that you cannot do it alone. Uh, there are many people who have been lone wolves for the last 10, 15, 20 years. You are not going to reach your full potential being a lone wolf. Not going to happen. At some point, you're going to have to open up the cave and let in maybe, you know, some little wolves or, you know, a few rabbits. You're going to have to go out and recruit some other animals from the forest because you will wear yourself out. You will wear yourself to the nub. And once again you're not going to even get close to your full potential. You're not even going to, uh, you, you're just not going to feel the love of the success universe. You, you're not going to feel that. And I see a lot of people who are stuck in lone wolf status. It's just like, hey, you know, and there, there's another lie that we as business people and entrepreneurs and hustlers, we like to tell ourselves, no one can do it as well as I can. No one's going to look after your, okay. <clears throat> I want you to get in your car if you, you know, or, go, or remember your drive this morning if you went to work and 
think of all of those businesses that have been in business for years. Not the new ones, all of the old ones, uh, the big ones, small ones, been in business for years. Now, all of those businesses were probably started by an individual or a group of individuals, and they all probably started with one location. Now that they're up, they're running, they're making money. How did that happen? They realized early on they couldn't do it themselves. They realized that they were going to have to go out and get some more wolves. You know, it's like instead of being the lone wolf, it's the lone wolf committee. And, you know, they would howl at the money every morning because you have to realize. And, uh, you know, and this is something that goes counter to the American education system that fucks up people between the ages of one and six. That you can do anything. You can be anything. If you want to be Superman and fly around the world, you can do it. Then later on, they start beating your ass down fact is we all have limitations and the sooner that you realize what your limitations are the sooner that you can go out and get help and build your business now what's really funny about that last statement is women are much better at getting help and creating little tribes but they frequently don't go for the big brass ring it's just not part of the equation for a lot of them they um they kind of get stuck there too they kind of get stuck at a certain position because what i noticed and this is from reading books you know those things that are like that thick books and talking to women what the motivation for women to start businesses is so different from than the motivation for men to start businesses it is um really really fundamentally different because women treat create businesses so they can stay home with the family nest have more freedom Whereas more men are kind of coming over to that because that's where I'm at. I am not trying to go back to being a slave to my business. I want my business to be my slave. It's like, yeah, you do that. You go out there and you you kill a dragon. No, shit, you kill two. And you bring that back to me. That's, that's what I tell my business every morning. You kill the dragons. I just sit back and manage shit. But... If you want to build a business, uh, the best advice I can give you is to make that your intention as early as possible. And, you know, that, that's something else that I have to talk to with some of my clients because they love the hustling aspect of their business. But there's uh, one who finally broke down. He hired people to do the stuff that, and, and it killed him, right? It just killed him because he didn't want to give up that stuff. But, you know, it really improved his business tremendously. It really improved his business because that is part of the matriculation of a hustler into a businessman. And that's one of the reasons that frequently you'll see that the people who started the company do not end up running it or managing the company because they don't have the mindset to be a manager. They're still in, um, you know, born identity mode of going out and breaking people's necks it's like hey you know i don't really want to be in the office and manage the other agents because i really like being out here blowing up shit killing folks and fucking pretty women i don't really want to be in the office nah sorry em uh i'm gonna stay out here because <laughs> this is fun out here and that's that's what happens to a lot of entrepreneurs they kind of get stuck on a certain aspect and there is no one really tells you about choice protocol. Well, I should, I should say on the Western side, because typically a lot of Europeans, they get that shit from birth. I know just certain things that just happen for other folks that don't happen for Americans, because I think we've lost a lot of the stuff that made this country great due to social engineering. Yeah, I know I said that, and a lot of people hate that, but it's true, because one thing that I'm seeing, and this goes really deep into the hustle aspect, is there are many people who cannot take care of themselves. I mean, just physically, financially, emotionally, they cannot take care of themselves. And that is why when you become a leader, you can build a tribe very easily because, I mean... I left home in 18, <clears throat> went through some shit. I never went back. Never got friends, left home 18, never went back. It is 
so hard. I know of so many people who never left or went back once, twice, three, four, five, six times. And this isn't if you know, if you come up with a great business idea and you follow my advice in one of the early videos, move back home with mom and dad, pay them some money and let them know you're working on something and work your ass off and make it happen. I'm not talking about that. I am talking about life has <laughs> beat your ass up and you were so weak that you are moving back home 25, 35, 40 years old. I had a situation where I was, shit, what, 32, 33? Um, yeah, the situation, a boarding house, um, labor pool shit. And I didn't go back home then. I was like, fuck it, I'm gonna figure this shit out. I One of the best decisions, one of the best decisions, because when you place yourself in the position of a child, regardless of your chronological age, you will be treated as such. That's how people will look at you. That's how people will respond to you. And that's how people will talk to you. You will be treated like boo-boo the fool because in some regards, you are boo-boo the fool. If you do move back home, get the fuck out of there as soon as possible. Because this is what's going to happen. Uh, it's it's going to become comfortable. And it's gonna The more comfortable it becomes, the harder and the harder it will be for you to leave. And, you know, one of my friends has this person in her circle, who's 50 years old, has never lived on her own. Um, you know, and, and some t someone, because uh, one of my friends had a baby, and I was at the hospital, and her mother had mentioned this person. It's like, well, maybe set them up. And uh, my friend was like, no, 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 no. He, he would not go for that. And she told me later, she was like, oh, knowing you, there is no way. And knowing her, because, you know, she's just looking for another daddy and another mama to take care of her. But homie don't play that that's just kind of ridiculous to me and it's very very core to being a successful hustler being able to take care of yourself i mean you know this is aside from injury um illness no i'm not talking about that because you know people will come up in the comments and put that kind of stuff down and those are the those are like that doesn't happen every day every day you know I, I mean, really really unless you're just sick how many times have you become debilitatingly sick in your life it's happened to me twice and you know i needed help with someone for six weeks um the second time um uh, i needed help for a good two and a half months the first time then i went on and in, in after after the second time i was actually in the midst of uh, doing the books and you know the reality television show, well, auditioning for it because it never happened, and I just kept pushing because I know what happens to you when you don't direct your own life, when you are prey to the whims and the motivations of other people because you don't have your own shit. It's something I preach. You know, you got to have your own... Everybody, I don't care, man, woman, dog, wolf, rabbit. Everybody needs something that is uniquely theirs. That is theirs. That's, you know, for me, I have books. <clears throat> you can say whatever the hell you want, but it takes a lot of effort to write a book, and it takes even more effort to write more books. So that that's my thing. You know, you can say whatever. You know, it's like, well, you know, no, that motherfucker got some books. He, he's actually done some shit. You cannot go ahead and take that away. And everyone needs some kind of accomplishment like that. Uh, a book, uh, some kind of business, some kind of achievement that you did on your own. I cannot emphasize how important that is to your personal health, to your mental health. Because when you get to that point of doing some stuff, and that's why I feel... You know, privileged to grow up in the era that I did because it was popular mechanics that just every month you get this magazine and there was stuff in there and you would go out and do stuff and you would like build stuff and make stuff and complete stuff. What it does is set you on a trajectory of starting and finishing things, which is so important, which is so important. I mean, you know, you can be late. That's that's OK. If you finish, it's going to be awesome. And there are many people who are in those positions where and they can't hustle because they cannot self-direct. 
And that's why you have so much flux because I monitor Facebook groups. I'm in a lot of them and I see a lot of gopher heads. It's like, I'm in this group, 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 I'm in this group. I'm in this group. It's just like, oh, there it is again, there it is, there it is again, there it is. And the groups have great information. Some of the groups have awesome information. Information without application is worthless. It is worthless. They're just like, I'm collecting this, this knowledge. Ooh, there's some more. Mm, I got this knowledge. I got, I got all this knowledge. And not doing shit with it. You are better off getting 10% of the knowledge and going out and putting in 90% execution and learning from that than getting 90% of the knowledge and putting out 10% execution. Because there are many people who have scared bitch syndrome. I may fail, which is true. I'm, it may not turn out right. It's just true. I may hurt myself. It's true. I may lose money. It's true. These are all possible outcomes for going out in doing something you've never done before. Now, the other side is you may be wildly successful. Uh, it may not happen the first time. It may happen the second time. It may happen the third time. It may happen the fourth time. The whole point is it goes back to self-direction and motivation. Um, with many of the things that I started from the storage auction business to the publishing to the YouTube channel. It was all kinds of smaggity smack, like, well, you know, I don't know if that's gonna work out for you. Really, you're gonna do that? Huh, really, you? And you just have to, and keep going, because what happens with people is that they adopt the mediocrity that others want to foster upon them. They start taking those concepts and ideas and going, yeah, maybe that is good for me. Um, I don't do that. And it makes you an alien. Once again, I'm from Planet Spankable. I'm, I'm an alien. And you, you really have to learn how to deal with that because you're not going to reach the success that you desire being the same person that you are currently. Because if the success you desire was fit for the person that you are, you would have it. You are going to have to change. And that is, ooh, that, you know, tribalism pops up in there. It's like, wait a minute, you know, we're, we're trying to get different from the tribe. You know, that was good enough for my mama. It's good enough for my daddy. What the fuck do you mean that I need to actually elevate my mentality? You know, we the Clampus. You know, we have been in these hills for the last hundred years and we'll be in these hills for the next hundred years. Fuck electricity. Fuck electricity. We don't need electricity. What? What? You some little bitch. So what if it's 10 below and you got to go to the outhouse? That's what makes real men and real women. Fuck progression. <laughs> there are many people. That's how they look at change. It's like, no. No. <laughs> I mean, it's serious. And that's, that's one of the things. I call myself the uh, entrepreneur psych patho psychologist and pathologist because I have to figure out, typically, there's usually going to be four or five core tribal beliefs screwing up a person. Some people... If you never had an entrepreneur in the family, it's just going to be that much harder for you to push forward and start a business because you don't have any models. You don't have anyone that you can look to and say, wow, that worked out really well for them. Because if you talk to a kid whose father was a successful entrepreneur, many of them just are not going to have a job. Now, if you talk to a kid of a successful entrepreneur and the kids were spoiled rotten, many of them are not going to have a business nor a job. <laughs> They're going to live on daddy and mama. And that's the that's the fault of the parents. But typically, because I've met a few people where their parents were really, really successful and the parents really loved it and these kids are in the business. That That's something else too. You know, if you're going to hustle, you, you need to expose your kids to that. Because the, the sooner, the better. The sooner, the better. I don't know where I got this from, this whole drive thing. I really, really don't. Because, you know, I kind of look at it and it's like, because I didn't give up. And, you know, like I said, I want you to give up. Because when you give up, that's when you start to lose. When you make that kind of decision that, hey, no, we, we're not going to do this. That uh, we're going to... Uh, Throw in the towel and let life say I win. You can't let life say you win. You got to beat life. But that that's the big difference between hustling, starting the business. It's just 
really execution and outcomes, you know, and if you can't go away for a week as a hustler, because, you know, you got to make your own paid time off. You've got to, you got to, you got to do all that. There is no, none of that stuff. If you can't go for a, away for a week or two and you come back and all your shit's like collapsed, you strictly have a hustle. And, you know, that's eBay. I think the only thing that can kind of sort of turn into a business, and I know I'm being highly disrespectful, is Amazon FBA. But, once again, Amazon FBA is more hands-on than people would rarely say because you can. it's not like you could just ship the stuff to Amazon and forget about it because the marketplace is dynamic. There's always something going on. You may put some up there for $30 and then some new cat shows up and he's got the stuff at 20 He just pretty much killed your business sometimes. I should say sometimes because Amazon's weird. But think about that. Uh, that's that's going to be a lot of what we will be talking about in Hustler University and how to make money, how to build a business. Uh, big changes. If you're on the email list, you should have received the email by now. But if not, just hit me up and I'll let you know what's going on. All right, this is Glendon. And I'll see you on the good side.